Welcome! In this video, let's explore a paradox first introduced by Bertrand, French mathematician in the late 1800s. He asked the following unusual question. So imagine you have a circle, and in that circle is inscribed an equilateral triangle. Bertrand asked, choose a chord at random, just some random chord in the circle, maybe this one, or maybe this one, or maybe just this one. What is the probability that whatever chord you choose has length longer than the side length of the triangle? All right. There are a couple of ways to answer this question. Here's answer number one. Whichever chord we choose, you might as well or imagine the whole picture is rotated so that chord has one end point positioned at the leftmost point of the circle. So whatever chord you choose, just rotate the picture so that the chord is at the leftmost end point. So maybe that's my chord there. Oops, I don't want to make it look like a diameter. And then while we're at it, we might as well position the equilateral triangle so one of its corners is also at that leftmost end point as well. Well then clearly, the chord you choose will be longer than the side length of the triangle if its other end point lands in any part of this circumference of the circle. This is clearly along the side length of the triangle. If I chose another chord with end point in there, it's also along the side length of the triangle and so on. If the other end point of the chord lands in this region, whoops, can't see it, here goes, it'll, it'll be shorter than the side length of the triangle. If it lands here, it'll be shorter. So really the question boils down to, what's the chance that the second end point of the chord lands in this portion of the circumference of the circle? Well, clearly from the symmetry of things, this is one third of the circumference of the circle. So the probability of getting the answer we seek is going to be one third. This is a valid, absolutely correct, mathematically sound ma argument. The answer to this probability question is one third. All right, answer number two. Well, again, um, since uh, we choose a chord, we might as well just rotate the whole picture so we can assume that the chord, whichever chord we choose, is horizontal. Not a problem with that. And then Bertrand suggested, okay, we're going to make that little uh, arrangement of things. Let's draw an equilateral triangle this way and another equilateral triangle this way. Do, 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 do. Oops, oh, my pen just went out. Oh, silly me. There we go. And then since everything is based horizontally, let's focus on the line of symmetry down the middle of the figure. Now clearly, if the midpoint of the chord you choose lands anywhere in this region, which I'm highlighting here, da, 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 da. let's see, here's a chord with midpoint there, or here's a chord with midpoint there, or here's a chord, whoop, just about the one I did before, with the midpoint there, I am getting chords with sides longer than the side length of the triangle. Can you see that? Whereas if the midpoint of the chord lands anywhere else on that vertical diameter, I'm getting chords that are shorter than the side length of the triangle. So the question really boils down, what proportion of the, that vertical diameter is this middle section? Well, a little exercise in geometry, play with 30, 60, 90, 90 triangles and so forth, I'll leave this an exercise. It turns out this shaded pink I'm drawing here is one half the whole diameter. Therefore, the chance of getting a chord that's longer than the side length of the triangle is actually one half. And this argument is absolutely valid and correct and mathematically sound. There's nothing wrong with what I've done. So we've now answered the question two different ways and gotten two completely different answers. So I guess we have to conclude now that one third equals one half. Three equals two. Actually, let me give you a fourth way if you want to, uh, a third way if you want to just play with this. Whoops. What am I doing? Cross this out. Da da da. Um, another way to think about this, answer number three. Da da da. Answer toi. Draw the equilateral triangle again. Whoops, having trouble drawing these things. And draw the inscribed circle. A little bit of thought shows that if the midpoint of the chord lands outside that circle, then we'll get a chord that's actually shorter than the side length of the triangle. Whereas if the midpoint lands anywhere inside that circle, we get a chord that's actually longer than the side length of the triangle. I'll let you think about that. So the question boils down to, what's the chance that the midpoint of the chord lands in this region of the circle? And a little exercise in geometry shows you that's one quarter of the circle, and you actually get the, fourth, the third answer, that the answer is one fourth. All right, how does one resolve this paradox? What's really going on? There's no way that one third equals one half equals one fourth. Well, the word of warning here is that I use the phrase, choose a course chord at random. This 
is the undefined term in the problem. What does at random mean? And it turns out these three different answers are playing on three different ways of choosing a chord at random. First way was to fix an endpoint and then choose a chord at random by selecting a second endpoint randomly. The second method was fix the diameter and choose points at random on the diameter and then set them to be perpendicular, the chords to be perpendicular to, those, to that diameter. And this third one is basically like dropping pieces of spaghetti on top of a circle on the ground um, and then check where the midpoints land. That's the third way of doing things at random. In fact, if you were to conduct this experiment by dropping spaghetti, you'll find about one quarter of the spaghetti strands land in such a way that their, their lengths across the circle are longer than the side of the triangle. Whereas if you drew a, cycle, a circle on the ground and rolled a broomstick across, always standing with the same position rolling a broomstick directly in front of you, you're really following answer number two. So this is the crisis that occurred in probability theory. When you set up a problem in probability theory, you need to define at the outset what you mean by at random. Which means it's very hard to define what probability theory is. That is, you have to define what probability theory is at the get-go before you can even start a theory of probability. It's stuck in a circular definition. And Bertrand's paradox you know, formulated the need that any question of probability theory has to come with a stated out, out, at, at the outset, a stated assumption of how things are being chosen. This is very remarkable, very clever stuff. And here's my homework for you. Uh, why, well, I chose an equilateral triangle, well, sorry, Bertrand chose an equilateral triangle setting aside a circle. What if I asked you, here's a square sitting inside a circle. Choose a chord at random. What's the probability that the chord chosen at random has length longer than the side length of that square? Come up with at least three clearly different answers to that problem. And have fun with it. Thanks.